Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about OpenAI's GPT-40 model, which is recently released. So uh, GPT-40 stands for GPT-4 Omni, and it has awesome capabilities. So it can take uh, uh, text, audio, and images input. And it can also output text, audio, and image. So it is truly multimodal. Uh, in fact, it responds to audio inputs in 320 milliseconds on average, which is very similar to human response time in conversations. Uh, it has been trained to take these audio inputs and respond uh, in back in audio in a single stage kind of a system. So before this, uh, you could do audio in audio out using the voice mode in GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. However, this 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 voice mode was very slow. So GPT 3.5 would respond in 2.8 seconds. GPT 4 would respond in 5.4 seconds because it used to work in three stages. It would basically take audio, convert it to text, text uh, transcribe to text, and then you know text to text uh, generation. And then again, text to uh, voice, text to audio kind of generation, right? So, but uh, GPT-4 Omni basically has uh, a single stage system and therefore it responds so quickly. Compared to GPT-4 Turbo, it matches the performance on English text and code. It is better on non-English text, uh, two times faster, half the price and has 5x higher rate limits on OpenAI's API. It is better at vision and audio understanding compared to existing models and I'll detail that more later. From an availability perspective, it is available in the free tier at OpenAI. It is also available, of course, for OpenAI Plus users with 5x higher message limits. Um, GPT-40 in API is also available for developers as a text and vision model. Uh, finally, it is, of course, also available as part of Azure's offerings now. So here are some examples of uh, inputs and outputs from GPT-4 Omni, Omni model. Right, so you could, uh, since it is truly multimodal, you can do really, really new uh, and creative multimodal use cases, which couldn't be done using models previously. So, for example, you could give an uh, interesting narrative to the model as an input text narrative and ask it to create an output image. So, this is like a first person view of a robot typewriting the uh, following journal entries. And actually, you can see those journal entries coming up through a typewriter. Right? You could also create cartoons nicely, so you could describe the cartoon in detail, and just like Dali would do, uh, GPT-40 can actually do it uh, uh, as well. You can ask it to come up with poetic type, type uh, typography, so actually you can give it a nice poem and essentially ask it uh, so as to create a handwritten uh, diary, single column kind of thing, uh, which is uh, large, legible, clear, and so on. So you could basically specify the uh, style of the text and so on. So and you could also basically say that yes, it should be elegantly decorated by doodles and you see all of those uh, nice things around. Uh, you can do this in iterative manner. So after after seeing this kind of an output, you can tell it to um, make it in dark mode and hey, it switches the mode to dark. You can also tell it to remove these notebook lines, paper lines and basically just uh, follows. You can come up with creative poster designs for movies. So for example, you could say here is one guy, here is another guy, and then I want to create a movie poster for the movie called Detective. And uh, you can describe in deep details as to what is the pose that you expect for these guys in the in the poster and so on. Uh, you can come up with the interesting coin designs. So it's a very, very interesting coin design um, automatically generated using uh, these prompts. So uh, you know uh, there is this uh, vector graphic for GPT-40. And uh, oh, GPT, uh, you know, OpenAI's logo with GPT-40, right? And then there is uh, some sort of a basic uh, uh, design uh, of, uh, of of a, you know, which was released with the GPT-4 release in 2023. And then it's basically saying, hey, modify this design so as to essentially make a design for GPT-40 with interesting visual elements on the side and OpenAI's logo in the center and so on. Okay. You can also do photo to caricature. So, um, so you can just take anybody's photo and create a caricature out of it. You could basically have a brand placement on uh, on on various kinds of uh, uh, backgrounds that you want, um, you know, your logo to be on. So, uh, a lot of capabilities of all of these interesting latest models, Dali, Dali three, GPD, all of them combined into a single model. It can create novel prompt, uh, novel fonts. So, you could basically specify in text. Uh, um, uh, different uh, details about these fonts, like it should denote AI revolution and so on, and then ask it to basically return the alphabets as you would see in in this new font. This is also a new font generated by uh, generated by GPT-40, which is basically uh, ornate and belongs to uh, belongs on a Steam engine, so steampunk font, as you could call it, uh, old-fashioned Victoria font that looks ornate and belongs on a Steam engine. 
Uh, you can do 3D object synthesis with uh, GPT-40. So you could basically uh, take, uh, you, you could, uh, uh, you know, give it, give these kinds of inputs, a sea land sculpture on the circular base of the sculpture, the word open AI is edged out and you can actually create like six different such images. Uh, um, so you know, view zero to view five, and then you can tell it to actually come up with a 3D deconstruction from these six generated images, and it basically does a great job, right? Uh, uh, you could actually ask it to do multi-line rendering uh, in a style that you would prefer. So you could basically say, here are the sentences that you would want to be rendered, and uh, you also want it to be just like the typewriter demo. You know, similarly, you could basically tell it to um, show this text uh, as if a person is uh, typing this on a messaging app where the first user says something, second user says something, and so on. Uh, it also supports audio, so you could basically, uh, you know, um, give it some sort of a, a transcript. So you could hear the transcript on the demo page, or I can actually play it here as well. Uh, So this is a typical meeting transcript, and the idea is that uh, folks uh, call out their names in the transcript. This is the actual transcript, so you can actually output the transcript, but what it also does is to identify who the person is who is speaking, right? Is it Mark or Dirk or Nick and so on, or uh, Javier and so on, right? So, uh, and this is basically derived from, uh, these guys are actually introducing themselves in the meeting, so essentially, um, so this is a rather simpler case of speaker diarization but uh, it does really well. So it can actually nicely uh, do audio to text and nicely identify who are the speakers, but it can also summarize what's going on in the audio. So there's a very good summary. So you can basically say how many speakers are there in the audio and what happened, it basically very nicely summarizes the audio. You could also ask it to do lecture summarization. And in this particular case, they actually give a summary for a 45 minute, 31 second uh, lecture. So, uh, and uh, you know, the summary is super awesome. So it's crazily awesome. So it basically nicely creates uh, some sort of slides out of it. Not literally slides, but uh, bullet points and that too nicely categorized with different uh, segment headings in that sense. So this is just a part and the remaining part is on the next slide. So as you see, it basically has these, uh, uh, you know, sections and subsections and then clearly called out parts of the subsections. Um, just like in DALI, you can uh, DALI or stable diffusion and so on. You can, it can also do variable binding, so you could tell it that the top cube is red and the G written on it, middle cube is blue with a P, and then the last cube, the bottommost cube is is green with the T written on it, and so on. So uh, more of uh, you know quantitative measurement. So on text evaluation, it basically creates a new state of the art on the hard MMLU data set, 88.7, which is uh, zero short COT, and 87.2 five short COT uh, on MMLU, right? So new state of the art compared to other models like Gemini, Claude's, uh, Claude 3's, uh, Claude 3 Opus or Gemini Ultra, um, you know, uh, even beating GPT-40. From an audio uh, ASR perspective, uh, uh, audio to, uh, so, so uh, from an audio ASR perspective, uh, speech to text in that sense is word error rate, right? So you, if you compare with Whisper V3 across different regions, so uh, South Asia um, and, or, or Western Europe and so on, you see that uh, GPT-40 16 short is super awesome compared to Whisper V3, right? Uh, audio translation performance, so, um, uh, so essentially, um, here are comparisons between uh, OpenAI's previous model, Whisper V3, versus uh, Meta's, uh, uh, you know, uh, audio translation models and Google's. Uh, so, so this one also includes Seamless 40 and Google's models as well, including Gemini. Uh, as you see, GPT-40 is is the best. Right? It's a new state of the art on the MLS benchmark. Uh, M3 exam is yet another benchmark for uh, uh, questions from other countries, ex you know, other than the US, and it also has multilingual and vision evaluation kind of questions. So sometimes the questions also include figures and diagrams. Uh, and as you see, across different languages, Afrikaans, Chinese, you know, English, Javanese, Portuguese, Swahili, uh, Thai, and so on. In most cases, you would observe that GPT-40 is better than GPT-4 itself. Uh, vision understanding, so it has uh, uh, state-of-the-art vision understanding across several benchmarks that you see, uh, uh, even when compared to GPT-4 Turbo or Gemini kind of models. Lastly, uh, Indian language uh, tokenization has been a big challenge. So typically, uh, if you use GPT-4 or GPT-4 Turbo, you would observe that it would take uh, uh, it would create a token per uh, per per uh, vowel and also per consonant. So for every matra, there would be a new token and so on. 
but uh, GPT-4 uh, O actually comes up with a, a much more efficient tokenization. So uh, as you see, Gujarati 4.4x fewer tokens compared to GPT-4 Turbo and you know 3.5x lower tokens in Telugu, 3.3x lower in Tamil, Marathi 2.9x lower, 2.5x lower in Urdu and so on. So overall, GPT-4 Omni is basically a great model. It uh, from open the latest uh, state of the art model in that sense is it uh, is inherently multimodal for multilingual scenarios as well. It's basically uh, awesome because it has very it has much lower inference latencies um, uh, because of because of uh, uh, before because of the revised tokenization. Okay, uh, there are awesome demos here, so please do check out those awesome demos. Hope you like this uh, summary of GPT-4 Omni model. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.